had a message to give the world uh, about this film and, and what, what you are t attempting to do, um, I would just very simply say it's, it's uh, we're portraying a walk of life and, and it must be accepted. Just accept it for what it is. What would you say? It's a camp. That's all it's it is. It's a camp. It's a real camp. All right. Camp means it's just way out, uh, uh, good time and, and fun. I guess you could call your film that. Huh? It's a camp. <laughs> Everybody that's, that is gay or homosexual has different reasons, has different backgrounds for everyone. None, none of us are alike. I was raised in a home where, where I was loved very deeply. But I also, there were problems in the home. And uh, my father had a problem that he could not conquer with uh, liquor. And even though he was, he was a good provider and so forth, he was no companion to me. So my mother had to be companion, and naturally I uh, associated or, or identified with my mother a great deal. So then when I reached junior high school or high school age, I didn't really realize what, what um, the whole thing entailed, but I began to notice that, that uh, uh, if a boy smiled at me, it, it made me feel good. It's human nature to be afraid of anything you don't understand. Um, the majority of society puts down the taboos and the, the laws of morals and moral conduct. And these, the only thing they have to govern them or to guide their decisions is uh, what is generally practiced by the great, greatest majority of people. So heterosexual relationships are viewed as the, as the accepted uh, moral standard, and anything deviating from this is considered to be bad. Uh, what they don't stop to realize is that not everyone fits into this pattern. Um, uh, a homosexual or any sex deviate uh, of any type uh, starts in childhood. This, this pattern is a sexual bent. It's, um, it's an emotional bent. It's not a mental illness. It's, um, it's like, like uh, uh, training a child to have certain types of views. You can raise a snob or you can raise a child that is, is uh, uh, tolerant. You can raise a Nazi or you can raise a Christian from childhood. And this is the same way with you, a sexual bent. His sex drive is bent this way, emotionally, and he can't help it. The homosexual is lonely. It's, uh, uh, we're not allowed to, to mate as, as the heterosexual people are. No one, no one, especially a man, should be without a mate. It's, it's almost a nece necessity of human nature to, to have someone to love and to love back and to be with. And these things are very important to a human being, and one who is without them is lonely. And one who is without them does things uh, that lonely, extremely lonely people do, and that is seek companionship. Uh, the straight world uh, looks upon homosexuals as degenerates, they see them cruising restrooms, they see them cruising bus depots and so forth, and it wouldn't be necessary. It actually wouldn't be necessary if society would realize that the homosexual is maybe not a third sex, but it is a third way of sex. It's a third sexual life. I only have um, a few things to say to the, to the public as a whole if I were if I were actually to be able to sit down and say, now listen, people, um, you're on this side of the street and I'm on this side of the street. And the things that I do aren't that different from what you do. I eat, I shave, I brush my teeth, I watch television, I like good music, I like good plays. I'm not that much different. I have the same hopes and the same fears that you have. The only thing that I have different from you is, is um, my outlook uh, towards my sex life, which is really my business and, and not yours, because I don't care what you do in your bedroom. It's uh, no one's business what anyone does in bed, actually, as long as both parties are consenting to it, both parties desire it, and no one is being hurt or forced into, into an act. It's no one's business at all. <laughs>